I had a Tumblr account back in the day, and I had my own little Catholic blog that was just pure cuteness. There's a lot of like porn blogs that pop up and they'll like follow you randomly or something and you just block them and move on with your life. But there was this one that the guy actually messaged me and he asked me to pray for him because he said he had a pornography addiction. I clicked on his blog and it was, it was bad. <laughs> it was just very, very pornographic. I remember just kind of like my stomach dropping and I knew that I was not gonna be able to stop. I don't even remember, yeah, like the second or third time after that. Like I, I remember that first time and then I remember like it being a regular part of my life, you yeah. know? When I was little, I was very emotional. I was a very sensitive kid. I took everything very hard and personal, and I was also really lonely. And no one in my life really knew, um, I think, how to respond to my emotions well. So that just kind of isolated me and made me feel even more lonely. We had everything materially we could have needed. My parents are together. We have a roof over our head. I have siblings, but I think that I don't really think I ever felt particularly seen by anyone in my family. When I felt really lonely, I would go on like YouTube or different places and just watch like scenes from movies or just romantic things and just get really hung up on what I thought at the time was, was love. So I found out about masturbation from a TV show that I watched in high school in secret. The, basically the whole premise of the show was that people were having sex. <laughs> you weren't having sex while you were with her and now you're not having sex without her. How are you good? How can everything be fine? They had literally a whole episode on masturbation in that show. I came to UCF and I moved in with my sister who was a senior. Near the end of my freshman year of college, my parents decided that they were gonna move to Indiana. So they were moving 16 hours away. And then my older sister was graduating and she was moving um, a couple hours away from me in a different part of Florida. For just kind of all of my family to then up and leave, um, it just kind of sent me into a little bit of a spiral. I look back on this period and I really don't know what happened. I feel like I went from zero to 100 in like a second. I think because maybe I was already addicted to masturbation and just like I was already on this downward spiral, I could not tell myself no. I couldn't stop what I was doing. There were men in my life that I was friends with that I knew that they struggled with pornography. I didn't know a single other girl that did. I was praying every day. I was doing all the, all the right things, right? And no one would have known this, but I was, just miserable. I felt like a hypocrite. Just made me feel really disgusting like all the time. I, I hated myself all the time because of it. And so now I felt really hopeless. I was like, I didn't know what else to do. Um, so I turned to a friend of mine and I, I told her, she grabbed my computer and she grabbed my phone and she put up like five different blocking softwares. That carried on for probably like another year where I wasn't falling into pornography regularly, but I was still struggling with masturbation because I didn't know how, there's not a blocking software, right? I didn't know how to fix that one. I had a friend who did not know my story at all, who didn't know I struggled with this. And she randomly reached out to me one day saying how she was struggling. And we texted a little bit and then I was like, what resources do you have? And she gave me all hers and I gave her all mine. There is one resource she sent me I had never heard of before, which was Magdala Ministries, which is a ministry created by Catholic women who struggled with pornography and it's made for Christian and Catholic women who struggle with any sexual addiction. They have a podcast and a blog, and then their main thing is these small groups that they put together. They have virtual small groups, and then they have in-person groups on a few college campuses that will hopefully continue to expand. The first time I went into a little group was it was a mess. I was crying the whole time. I didn't talk. <laughs> I just listened, but there was so much there was just so much love. 
they really knew what I was going through. They knew what it was like to be Catholic, to, to go to confession, to pray, but to still be struggling with pornography and masturbation. And so I could be really free and open and vulnerable. And I experienced more healing and more freedom than I, I had ever had up until that point. All the stories I've heard, all the women say the same thing. They didn't know that anyone else struggled, that any other women struggled. I can't even imagine still living in the addiction that I lived in. I, I can't imagine it. And to know that there are women who've been in that place, who've been addicted to pornography or masturbation or any sexual addiction for years and years. Supporting Magdala is reaching out your hand to those women and helping them, helping them find Jesus, helping them find mercy and freedom and healing. And it's destroying the shame that they live in, the perpetual shame of no one else understands, no one else cares, no one can love me in this. Magdala actively combats all of those. And in supporting Magdala, you're actively combating those. You're helping those women directly um, and giving them more hope than they could have ever asked for.